Hi everybody, welcome to my latest YouTube video. It's your old mate, Beetle Dave, calling to you from Derby in the United Kingdom. Uh, this is a bit of a follow-up to a video I did a couple of weeks ago on this CD, The Rolling Stones, Rock and Roll Circus. Uh, I paid £6 something for this from our recent trip to York. Now when I showed you this on that video, I did say that I was trying to get this album on vinyl, which I've actually found, and I've also gone a bit mad. So the main feature today is going to be the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus. We're going to do a bit of a deep dive into it, and I will show you all the goodies that I've managed to get in roughly two weeks. Um, first, we're going to do some Beatle Dave twist and shout outs. Um, the first is two. Mike Morris, again, um, Mike Morris, I have mentioned him a couple of times on the channel. I'd just like to mention his latest video. I'm not going to spoil it, but he's actually found a Holy Grail. So it's worth checking out. So here's your twist and your shout out to Mike Morris. Check his uh, video, his YouTube channel out. Fantastic. And if you check his latest video... His latest episode of what he's found you'll be surprised he hasn't actually told you what he paid for it but it's it's a fantastic find um the second beetle dave's twist and shout out again is going to go to everybody out there that is just you know carrying on supporting me uh leaving me likes uh, leaving me comments and subscribing. So here's your twist and shout out to everybody who is a member of the Beetle Dave fan club uh, subscription, whatever you want to call it. I'm quite overwhelmed. We are getting some really, really, really nice comments and everything now. And the final, there's there's one more twist and shout out I nearly forgot, is to my old mate Terry Man. So here's your twist and shout out to Terry Man. Your twist and shout out to Terry Man. You have been very, very kind, mate. You sent me a postcard and you sent me a couple of mugs, which I did mean to bring up here and show people, but I've left them downstairs. <laughs> so, unfortunately, I can't show them. Right, I'm just going to... Right, we're going to get onto the main feature now. This is two and a half minutes, and we're going to even start to the main feature. So, I'm going to read a little bit off Wikipedia. So, um, The Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus was a concert film hosted by and featuring the Rolling Stones. And it was filmed between the 11th and 12th of December 1968. And most of the performances were, were recorded live. It was directed by Michael Lindsay Hogg, who produced some of the Beatles promo videos and stuff like that, didn't he? And didn't he produce the original Let It Be movie as well, I think. Uh, and it, was, it also featured Jethro Tull, The Who... Taj Mahal, Marianne Faithful, obviously the Rolling Stones, the Dirty Mac, which was a super group featuring John Lennon, Eric Clapton on guitar, Mitch Mitchell of the Jimi Hendrix Experience, who was on drums, and then Keith Richards on bass instead of Bill Warman. I can't understand why Bill Warman wasn't on, on bass. Uh, and there was, it was. Um, reported that also at one point uh, the newly formed Led Zeppelin was going to be in it and also the Small Faces but you know things turned out a bit different uh, the film was meant to have been aired on the BBC uh, but the Rolling Stones withheld it uh, saying that basically their performance was substandard because over like two days they was getting tired and I think there was a few drugs and things being involved and I think it was overshadowed slightly by the who uh, which it goes on to here and it was also I didn't know I didn't know this until I was reading this this was also the last ever performance of the Rolling Stones which featured Brian Jones uh, and apparently he didn't want to do it originally he didn't want to do it he says no you can do it without me but it was coaxed by Michael Lindsay Hogg to actually join in and to be fair on some bits, he does look a little bit like he doesn't know where he is. But then on other things, his slide guitar, on no exceptions, is absolutely fantastic. So I think he does deserve to be in it. And I think, in his own way, I think Brian did really enjoy doing this. You can see him smiling. And at the end of the film, if you haven't seen the film, I don't want to like 
um, give the plot away, but, although there's not really any plot to it. But at the end of the film, when they're singing Soul to the Earth, he's going like that and he's trying to make Keith Richards laugh, which I found very, very strange seeing that. So he, he, I think he was having a good time. Um, so it was basically, it's a bit, it reminded me of, when I watched the film, it reminded me a bit of Magical Mystery Tour, where, yeah, some of it does make sense, but a lot of it doesn't. But the thing with this is, it was set in a circus, and it was a real circus, apparently. Uh, just bear with me one second, I'll tell you what who the circus was. Uh, it was quite a famous circus at the time. Um, duh, 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 duh. It was Sir Robert Fawcett Circus. And it was a proper circus, so like I say, everybody, all of them, apart from Jethro Tull, played live. And I think Jethro Tull... Because the two, the two members, the drum, drummer, drum, the drummer and the guitarist, hadn't been in the band for very long. And if you actually see it, the the, the guitarist is actually the guitarist out of Black Sabbath. Uh, Tony Lammy, is it? Um, but yeah, every, everybody else performed live. The Rolling Stones performed live. The Who performed live. Taj Mahal performed live. The Dirty Mac performed live. Uh, you know, it is well worth actually seeing this film. Um, now, the thing is, just go back up a little bit. This film, although it was meant to come out in 1969, beginning of 1969, was shelved. And over the years, there were certain people who tried to edit it and things like that. At one point, it was offered, it was actually offered to The Who. And it was going to be the Who's Rock and Roll Circus. So they would have edited the Rolling Stones out of it, probably. Um, but it wasn't actually officially released until October 1996. 1996. Uh, it was a long time after 1968, isn't it? Uh, but then that came out. It had this, a very short theatrical release, according to this. And then you had your home home media, which was, you know, your VHS tapes. Later on, uh, DVDs and now Blu-rays and things like that. Um, I was absolutely amazed with this. When I listened to this, um, when I got it, I thought, wow, you know. I had seen the film. I did I actually watched it on YouTube, of all places. Um, so I did know what to expect. But listening to this, this is a lot clearer on this CD than what it was on the film I watched. Right, so I said when I got this that I wanted to get the vinyl. And Beakle Dave being Beakle Dave doesn't do anything by half, does he? I mean, the CD, I don't mind. Um, so I've got the vinyl and I've got this as well. So we'll look at this first. This is the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus. It's a limited edition. It's a film and extend, expanded soundtrack set. So you get four discs in this. Uh and it also includes newly discovered audio. So on this you get a DVD of the film and you get a Blu-ray of the film. Now I've watched the Blu-ray. Uh, and the Blu-ray is better than the film I watched on YouTube last year or the year, year before. It has been uh, cleaned up and it does sound really, really nice. And it does come across like everybody involved is actually having a good time. John Lennon's laughing and joking and things like that. Like I say... Brian Jones is laughing and joking. Yes, he does look a bit sort of in, in some places like, what the hell am I doing sort of thing. But when he's playing his guitar, he's, he's in his element. And like I say, his slide guitar on no acceptations is absolutely fantastic. Now, the other thing about this is, according to Wikipedia, um, Mick Jagger wanted this uh, rock and roll circus to promote... Um, the Beggar's Banquet album. So a lot of the songs that the Rolling Stones did perform was off that album. Um, so yeah, this is what we get. This is, uh, like I say, it's a CD. Well, it's a double CD. And then you get a, a Blu-ray and a DVD. Uh, you get two CDs because the, the second CD is actually all bonus tracks. Uh, and there is extra commentary and stuff on it. That is a fantastic picture. I don't know if you can see that right. So that has got the Rolling Stones. Um, and then you've got Marianne Faithful. I think that's supposed to be Marianne Faithful there. And then you've got, I think that's Jimi Hendrix. Uh, Jimi Hendrix? Eric Clapton. Then you've got the Rolling Stones. Then you've got Yoko Ono, John Lennon. And then I think that's Pete Townsend out of the who. 
And at the beginning of the film, although that is like a painting, that is how the film starts. Um, this is actually quite good because you do get like a little booklet with it. So you've got, you have got some uh, thing, you know, lots of things about the film. You've got, I mean, look how happy they look there. Marianne Faithful. I think at the time this was recorded, this film, I think Marianne Faithful was still Mick Jagger's girlfriend once at the time. Uh, that is the super group that sort of like was but never was. That is the Dirty Mac um, before John decided to do the Plastic Ono Band. Fantastic though. Their version of Your Blues, dare I say it, sounds just as good as the Beatles version of the then current White Album. If not, slightly better. Yeah, might be slightly better. Uh, that's the, them singing the soul to the earth. Now you look at Brian Jones there, but yeah, he doesn't look in the best of health. But he's got a massive smile on his face. He's probably thinking, what the hell am I doing here? Stills from the film. Rehearsals. Another still from the film. It is actually, a, you've got to watch it. It's hard to describe it if you haven't watched it, but it is a fantastic film. Very much of its time, don't get me wrong, it hasn't, I wouldn't say it's exactly aged very well. You can tell it's something from the 60s, um, but that is not necessarily a bad thing. Mick Jagger and John Lennon. Old Mickey boy there, look. Mick and Keith. And this is everybody that was in it. So if you wanted to stop that, freeze it and zoom in, that is everybody that was in it and who played what. So you get backstage footage, you get never before seen performance featuring of John Lennon, Keith Richards, Eric Clapton, Mitch Mitchell and Taj Mahal. Uh, they do a version on the bonus CD of this of Revolution by the Beatles, uh, the Dirty Mac do. Um, I can sort of like understand why it was left unreleased, but... For historical importance, it's absolutely fantastic. Credits for the circus. See, it was a proper circus. And then that's how the film ends with that's how it is when they're singing Soul to the Earth. And then you open it up. This is amazing how this happens. And it goes like that. Look, so these two discs here that is the Blu ray on blue. <laughs> then that one there is the DVD that is the soundtrack CD and then that one is the bonus CD yeah very good I've listened to I will be honest I haven't listened to the CDs on this because I've listened to the CD on that on that one so I'm not quite sure what these actually sound like but I've watched the Blu-ray and the Blu-ray Blu -ray is amazing absolutely amazing um and i think i paid something like 19 pound for that and it was brand new it was sealed when i got it um so i didn't really need that but that got me to get that and to get the vinyl so i have got the complete set sort of thing um and now the vinyl the vinyl is absolutely amazing this is the vinyl box set i'm sorry if you get any glare off the light but it is very dark in my music room today if I look tired and knackered, by the way, it's because I am. <laughs> I'm getting old. I've just done an eight-day stretch at work where you don't get any days off in between. I mean, you come home at night and things, don't get me wrong. And it's a killer. Honestly, it's a killer. Um, yeah, I was very lucky to get this. These are usually quite expensive, these vinyl box sets. I think this is a reissue from 2019. So I think when this came out on vinyl originally, it was just a double LP. I could be wrong, but on this you get a bonus disc. Um, and it is all set out, as it appears in the film, apart from sides five and six, which is the extra tracks. Um, so, 
There's 28 tracks on this, over three LPs. So that is the track listing. I don't think you're going to see this, are you? Try my best. So that is it. And then five and six are the bonus songs. Again, that picture's on there. And this is made to look like gold on here. Where on that, it's very yellow, isn't it? But on that, it is like shiny gold. And it is on there as well. And on the back. So I was... <sighs> I was lucky to get this at the price I got it for. Like I said, these usually are quite expensive. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And I thought you got a book with this originally, but you don't. It is just three LPs. So that is the box. Which is quite nice to have, isn't it? It's nice to have. And I got this from a place called Vinyl Sound. Uh, it was brand new. I did get it off the uh, dreaded eBay. But, you know, when you're getting bargains, it doesn't really matter, does it? So this is this is the first LP. So, although it comes in that elaborate box, then you do get like a, a proper little cover for your LP as well. Which again has got um, stills from the film, Mary Ann Faithful. I think that's... That's one of the circus performers. Then you've got Pete Townsend and Mick Jagger. There is circus things going on all the way through it as well. You do get circus acts. You get a fire eater and things like that. Uh, that's Jethro Tull, by the way. Um, yeah, so on here you get Mick Jagger's introduction where he says, you've heard of Piccadilly Circus, blah, de, blah, de, blah. Here is the Rock and Roll. Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus that go, that then mixes into Enter the Gladiators and that's done by the the circus band then you get Mick Jagger's introduction of Jethro Tull and then you get Song for Jeffrey, Jethro Tull then Keith Richards introduction for The Who and they do a quick one while he's away my name is Ivor I'm an engine driver that song stuck in my head now and to be fair, I can see what the Rolling Stones meant because the that is the only thing that the Who do on this is this. Um, a quick one while he's away. It does go on for about seven minutes or something, but it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and they did it all live, you know. Keith Moon is banging away and everything. Keith Moon's got quite a good voice, quite, quite a good singing voice when he's not being stupid. You know, he has got a very, very good uh, singing voice. And then side one finishes with... Over the Waves, again, by the Circus Band. So it is like a proper act, that. So then side two, you get Ain't That ain't that A Lot of Love. That's Jethro. It isn't Jethro at all. It's Taj Mahal, sorry. Then you get Charlie Watch introduces Marianne Faithful singing Something Better. That is seems a little bit out of place. It's a lovely song, and Marianne Faithful was a lovely-looking woman back in the day when she was young, wasn't she? But this song just doesn't seem... Every other song on here seems like more rocky or bluesy, where that just seems like a ballad and it just seems a little bit out of place. Now, it probably didn't at the time, or maybe it just seems a little bit out of place to me, I don't know. Um, then you get Mick Jagger and John Lennon's introduction of the Dirty Mac, which is actually quite funny. And then you get the Dirty Mac, which is John Lennon and, and co, uh, doing a version of Yar Blues. Uh, like I say, I know it's controversial, but I think that... that matches the Beatles version um dare I say it could even be slightly a little bit better because it's a live version John did do a live version later didn't in 1969 in the uh live at Toronto LP um then you get a whole lot of Yoko which nine nine out of ten people won't listen to but it is still the dirty the dirty Mac um which is, it's got its place. It's just to show Yoko's wobbling on because the actual songs sound really, really nice. <laughs> Can I say that? Well, yeah, because it's my, it's my channel, isn't it? That's no disrespect to Yoko, but that would probably have been better as an instrumental. Uh, so LP2, again, you get some stills from the film. And then you get the track list in here. Again, if you wanted to zoom in, Freeze it and zoom in. Um, 
So you get John, Len John Lennon's introduction of the Rolling Stones. You get Jumping Jack Flash, which is actually a fantastic live version. Parachute Woman, I can't, I know I've got it, but I can't ever really remember it being as a standout song on any time I've listened to it before, but it does fit in very, very well here. No expectations of a highlight, like I say, you've got um, Brian Jones slide guitar, absolutely fantastic. It is a really, really nice song as well. And then you get You Can't Always Get What You Want. Again, a fantastic live version. And on that, you can actually see Brian Jones enjoying playing playing his guitar. He's like Gold Gibson monitor, I think he, he played. Um, then side four is Sympathy for the Devil. Again, that is a live version. They're not miming it, it's all live. And for some reason, they've got Brian Jones shaking some maracas all the way through it. Now, to me, that does... It's a fantastic version, don't get me wrong. But it would have been better to have, in my opinion, and again, it is just my opinion, to have Brian playing his guitar on it. Um, and I think they did do a version of him playing the guitar somewhere. I think I've read that somewhere. <sighs> or is it just in my head? Um, but it just seems a shame that, you know, he was reduced to playing Maracas for that. And it's a long song, isn't it, to be shaking <laughs> to shake your Maracas to? <laughs> and then you get the, the end of the film is Soul to the Earth. Um, and that is them, Keith Richards and Mick Jagger sing live to pre-recorded backing track of that. And, and at the end, they're all going like that. And as I say, that is where you can actually see Brian Jones really, really enjoying himself. Um, so, yeah, that is the track list on that. And if you wanted to do what track list on the other one, I don't know if I did that. Again, if you wanted to freeze it and zoom in. So that's the, that, is the, that is the two albums that make the proper album if, or the soundtrack to the film. Now, this one is the bonus album. <coughs> the dirty mat look there so on this you get uh, checking up on my baby Taj Mahal that is like a old Sonny Boy Williamson song I seem to remember somebody else doing that in the 60s um, very very good though it is really really nice leaving trunk Taj Mahal and then you've got Kariana, Taj Mahal, uh, featuring Jesse Ed Davis. He obviously went on to work with John, didn't he, later on. Uh, side three is probably the most, well, the last side of these three LPs. In one way, it's probably the most uh, interesting. You get Revolution Rehearsal by the Dirty Mac. And it is a, rev it is a rehearsal. I don't think it's done... Um, seriously to be included in the film I think it's just something that they just did to warm up to basically um, then you get Warm Up Jam by the Dirty Mac um, so that was actually written by John Lennon, Eric Clapton Keith Richards and Mitch Mitchell now I think that could have fitted into the film probably better than the Yoko Ono track, again don't shoot me, this is just my opinions <coughs> excuse me it is a really, really good good song, and I think, like I say, it would have fitted in with the film. Um, then you've got Yard Blues Take Two, um, which isn't quite as good as the one that is in the film. And then you've got Brian Jones introducing, you know, all the Rolling Stones introduced somebody, but Brian Jones did introduce somebody, but it was cut out of the film. Uh, and it introduces Julius... Catching, I think that's that's the name of the person who is a pianist, and it is some classical music, which again would have probably been a fitting ending to the film, uh, because it finishes off with Mozart Sonata in C major, first movement. Well, I think after Soul to the Earth, when the credits and stuff was are going. That should, it might have even been on it. I don't know. It might have been on it. Um, <coughs> right, do you need this album in your collection? Um, 
I don't know. If you're a Rolling Stones fan, you probably do. Uh, this was actually released in conjunction with a Abco, I think. Um, but it is worth having. Like I said, it can it can be expensive though, folks. So you know, be careful what you're doing. I paid. I think it was forty pound with the post and packaging for that. Now for three LPs, I don't think that's that's too bad a deal. Um, in some ways, again, this is just my observation and my opinion. These sound better, or even these sound better on the vinyl than what they do on the CD. That is just my opinion. Um, if you've got this, then technically you don't need that, I suppose. And if you've got that, then technically you don't need that. See what I'm saying? You know, I've just got it so that I've got all three of these. The only thing that I might look out for, and again, this is a big mite, because I don't know if she'll let me do it or not, is... The only thing with this is it's hard to get these in. A bit like the cartridge band on the one thing. It's it's not as bad as that. But isn't that a lovely package? I think what they should have done with this is release this as a fully fledged box set. So you'd have had it in that, but this would have been slightly bigger. So you'd have got all them three LPs and then you'd have got that in it as well, like that. And just add it as a Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Service Deluxe box set. And I think that would have sold by its bucket loads. Depending on how much it was of course. Because with um, Abco nothing's ever sort of like cheap was it. But that looks a lot lot better with the gold than what that, that does with the just the yellow on it. That is a fantastic CD. If that's all you can afford to buy get that. But I do think that and that would make a fantastic deluxe box set and you could even take the take the book out that and have it you know blown up a little bit so it would be like a fully fledged book yeah what was i saying the only thing i might look out for now although to be fair i haven't seen it is the original lp for this um just bear with one sec folks excuse me i just just need a drink of juice i've got a bit of a gluggy throat this morning better yeah fantastic um i'm very very glad and proud to have that or these items in my collection now if you do know if you can get the lp on its own without it being a box set please let me know um i think you can i'm sure and you don't know 1996 this came out didn't it on vhs and cd so it might not have ever been released on it LP into this little box set thing. I haven't really spent a fortune, folks, to be honest, ever. I mean, that was £6, and you've got about 50 about £55, just under £60 for that for those two there. Bearing in mind, you've got everything there, haven't you? You've got the DVD, the Blu-ray, a remastered CD, I think it is, and the extras, the extra songs. You've also got the extra songs on that, but it is nice to have it on vinyl. Um, <coughs> excuse me, folks. I begging me pardon. Yeah, um, I love it. I do, I love it. Um, if you've got any of these, by the way, if you've got like single CD, that one, or the vinyl box set, Leave me a comment. What do you think? Do you think the quality is good? Do you think do you think the Rolling Stones were right to shelve it? Or Alan Klein was right to shelve it? Do you think it would have been better coming out in 1969? See, that's the big question, isn't it? Because it's like, I can sort of like relate to this with the Magical Mystery Tour. Um, I've always loved the Magical Mystery Tour, the film. I think it's a fantastic um, piece of work. I think it's something... The Beatles were very good at was doing something and doing it so that people didn't expect them to 
necessarily do that. Now, when that came out, that was slated by the critics and by most fans as well. Now it's classed as a as a, like a little gem, isn't it? You know, it's like a you know a little mini masterpiece. And I think this is the same sort of thing. I think because we waited so long for this to be released, I think this seemed old when it came out. Whereas if it would have been released in 1969, as it was intended to be, as a warts and all thing, you know, I think that would have been a highlight of the Rolling Stones. I'm not saying it's not a highlight now, it is a highlight, but it probably hasn't aged as well as what it would have done if it would have been released at the time it was recorded. <coughs> it's a fascinating insight when you're watching the movie, by the way, to see what flower power or the sum of love or whatever you want to call it the swing in london the swing in 60s was actually like everybody in the audience and i think i mean i think there's all friends of the rolling stones and all that lot. anyway i don't think there's like normal people that coming off the street uh they're all enjoying it they're all loving watching all those musicians play live um i think the rolling stones do actually come across quite well <sighs> were they staged by the who i don't know honestly don't know i do know i enjoyed the uh the quick one miles away sort of thing i did enjoy that and it is one of the highlights of the film yeah but then again seeing john lennon performing yard blues without the other beatles is a highlight of the film you know seeing john lennon performing live without paul mccartney uh ringo or george you know it's it's fascinating, but it is actually also a bit strange to see because, you know, technically he was still with the Beatles then, wasn't he? Um, and I think the Rolling Stones' performances of their songs are amazing. If I had to pick, what shall we pick? I would say No Expectations, that deserves to be on here, definitely. And they perform that absolutely amazing. Sympathy for the Devil. Again, faultless performance. Um, you can't always get what you want. Again, fantastic song, worthy of it. I think everything that the Rolling Stones do on the on this <coughs> project deserves to be in it. Um, Soul to the Earth is a fantastic song to finish the whole album, DVD, film, however you want to call it, off with. Uh, yeah, and. It is a masterpiece. I, I, I would say that is a masterpiece. Um, you might not agree. You might think it's a load of crap, Dave. What you, what you bought all that for? Because I do these things, don't I? <laughs> I do do these things. But at least I've got virtually complete set now, which is nice. And we'll be going into my ever-increasing Rolling Stones collection. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it's been a bit of entertainment. I hope you learnt a little bit about that. Um, now, if you're thinking of buying any of those and you're in two minds, after watching my video, is it going to make you want to go out and buy them? I don't regret buying any of them, to be honest. Um, I think each one of them has its rightful place in the collection. And if you're lucky enough like me to get all three of them, you've done very well and you'll be very, very happy. That's going to be it for today, folks. So I hope you're all well and dandy out there in Beatles world, YouTube land, uh, <coughs> people on the internet and members of the VC. Uh, any thoughts you've got on these, any of these things I've shown you today? It is a bit of a deep dive, but it's also just a little bit of fun as well. Um, like I say, I'm very, very happy and I know I'm quite honoured in one way to get all those in such a, such a short period of time as well. About two weeks to get all that. Um, So, if you haven't subscribed, by the way, please just think about subscribing. It is free. It doesn't cost you a penny. If you've liked this video and you're not subscribed, just think about it. It's in that button, which is somewhere down there. Good button. That, that looks weird. Looks weird. <laughs> yeah, it is free. It doesn't cost you a penny. If you want to leave me a comment, please leave a comment. I do try and... Well, I do read every comment, and I do try to <coughs> answer as many as I can. And... Do me a favour if you like this video, just leave me a thumbs up because that helps 
you to promote the channel to new people uh, and that's going to be it by the way if you want a shout out on the next Beetle Dave's Twist and Shout Outs just leave me a comment that's all you've got to do um, so until the next time it's wishing you all peace love and happiness wherever you are in the world remember Beetle Dave loves you you are the beat of Beetle Dave and until the next time it's love and peace man Whew.